Okay, we're back. Uh, is there a speech against this amendment? You don't have to speak, you know, but I mean. This, this was debated extensively within the committee. Um, I, I honestly don't remember all of the points that came up against this interpretation. Uh, I, I can list a few of them. First of all, extension is intended to cover works that did not get sufficient uh, visibility to, the, to, to voters in the United States. That was the basic reason for it. Um, it is arguable, it's a reasonable argument that a, that a work that was published in the UK in 2012 may not have gotten sufficient visibility to be nominated this year and consequently should get extended eligibility for next year. It is ludicrous to argue this for a 1937 work, not getting to Okay. Now, I know there are addition, there are motions to uh, extend eligibility to specific works, and I uh, may well wind up voting for them. But the idea that the business meeting intended a blanket extension, that things published 75 and 50 years ago did not get sufficient uh, visibility, is ludicrous. The second point is, is that uh, many of the people in this room were at that meeting. Uh, nobody remembers anybody discussing this simply was not discussed. The idea that it, the legislative history in any way supports it is ludicrous. Um, it, it, you know, I, I think that the motions to extend eligibility, explicitly extend eligibility for those years should be given due deference and considered and debated. The idea that we have no choice but to do it is simply wrong. Could the chairman please request people state their name when they, when they speak? Yes, uh, people should state their name. Uh, that was Mark Olson speaking. Uh, is there a speech in favor of Minority Report 1, uh, the amendment in Minority Report 1? Yes. Uh, uh, Vincent Roxy, um, also a co-proposer or seconder, I guess, with, uh, with Ben for the Minority Report. Um, I think that I'd make two points. One is, for, for me, the common sense language of uh, the retros uh, it implies to me that you know if, if the rules should apply, if the same rules should apply for the retros as apply for the regular pupils, then that that just means, makes common sense. Uh, there will obviously be cases when you know particular categories might not apply in previous years, and you deal with that because nobody nominates them uh, anything in those categories. Um, in particular, the other point I would make is um, the the purpose of extension to me is not simply. Uh, visibility or uh, of, of works that may have uh, not had visibility in the U.S. But also helping to define, for the purpose of the nominators, what is a nine, what is a 1938 work? Is it a 38 work? Is it a 37 work? The rules say if it's first published in the U.S. in 1930, sorry, if you use current years, if it's published in 2013 uh, in the U.S. and it had been previously published outside the U.S. in 2012 or earlier, then the rules say that we can extend it. To me, if the rules say the same applies to the retros, common sense, it should apply back in 38 as well. So it's to help the nominators understand what counts as a 38 work. And it doesn't matter if it's a famous work or not. Um, for, for me, the, 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 the two examples, it's perhaps unfortunate that they're very, very famous, which we'll come to later. But for me, it, it's just simple. The same rules should apply. Uh, for the retros as for the current rules. Okay. Time in favor has been exhausted. Are there any further talk speeches against the amendment? Glenn <coughs> Glazer. I think I agree with the majority and I uh, disagree with my esteemed colleague Vincent on what common sense means. Uh, <laughs> uh, to me, common sense means applying reason to something, not blanket legislative, literal interpretations of the rules. Um, to me, um, Mr. Olson's comment about uh, apply, about what, what we're doing here, about visibility in 75-year-old works is just, um, I have trouble fathoming it. Okay, the well, time's been exhausted on both sides. Uh, we'll proceed to vote on the amendment. It, well, the amendment just requires a majority vote, regardless of the fact that the main motion requires the three quarters. Uh, so the question is on the amendment, which would change it from saying that it uh, only covers the current Hugos and not the retros, to change that to say that it covers both the current Hugos and the retro Hugos. So those who are in favor of that change, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? 
The nays have it, and the amendment fails. So we're back on the main motion. Is there any further debate on the main motion? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to speak against it. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, the reason for the extension of eligibility was because the vast majority of war cons held in the U.S. have a vast majority of their members from the U.S. who do not have easy exposure to works published outside the U.S. However, next year's World Con is in London, and a majority of the people who are eligible to nominate are likely to have had exposure to these works as they were published. At least enough of them will have exposure that they will not need to, to, to have to wait a year. And therefore there is no reason in fairness that we should actually extend those works as opposed to others. This was the, one of the reasons why we continue to have this motion every year instead of making a blanket rule because we haven't been able to come up with a blanket rule that says this is a world con which should have extensions, and this is a world con which doesn't need them. And therefore, I think next year's world con is one which does not need them. They already have a large membership, uh, many of whom are not from the United States. And therefore, I think we should vote against this. Speech in favor? First speech in favor. Please keep your name. <coughs> Dave McCarty. I am not sure if I agree with Kent on, the, on his issue of the majority of uh, one con, uh, but, the, but that statement is, is in effect misleading because the nominators which control what get on the ballot are actually from three world cons and only one of those is one con three. The other two world cons which contain a significant number of nominators are US based, or well is, is a US based and possibly another US based uh, world con. And so there, it, it is clear to me that it is not a majority of people have access to those works easily. Another speech against the motion or in favor? Uh. Well, Mr. Chairman, aside from the fact Who that are I, you? <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I felt no need, I, I should point at this point because of the question of privilege implicit in the uh, statement from the floor. In as much as I identified myself the first time I stood before the meeting, I didn't think there was any real need to do it again. But if you wish, I'm Kevin Stanley. And even if you don't wish, I'm still there. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, personally, I think we should, in fact, make this extension permanent, and that we'll deal with that as a separate issue. But in any event, no matter where we hold the Worldcon, Generally speaking, most of the people eligible to nominate are in the U.S. anyway. This is a problem no matter where the convention is held, and therefore, I think we should extend the eligibility. Are there any further speeches? <coughs> Emily, I'll up just a very short note. Um, the rest of the world is not one place as lots of places. <laughs> Any uh, further speeches on this motion? <laughs> yes. Thomas Monaghan, uh, if you if we don't extend this privilege to the next con, the British uh, book set will that we didn't see this year won't be seen, won't, won't be considered for next year's Googles. So there'll be a gap for them being considered. So if a British science fiction book was real excellent this year, it, you know, there'd be a gap in the looking at the books, in my opinion. So. Further speeches? Yeah. I guess I wish to five-minute time limit for this debate, which we have not yet exhausted. Uh, Andrew Adams, I, I disagree with Ken, not on the matter of substance, but on the matter of interpretation, in that we are talking about uh, extending eligibility for works that would have been eligible this year to long con next year. And so the debate is not about whether the long con uh, 
uh, the, it's not about the debate whether the long con nominators should have seen the works, it's about whether this year's nominators have seen the works this year. Any further speeches? Okay, we're running out of time in any case. Uh, we'll proceed to a vote. Since this is a three quarters vote, I will do a candid uh, serpentine vote. So we haven't done one of those yet this time. Uh, the way it works is I call for votes on one side, in this case in favor of the main motion and then against. When I call for votes on one side, uh, people wishing to vote that way should stand. And we will then, or, sorry, the head table people then go back and forth counting out when we say the next number you should sit down. Uh, so all those in favor of... Could you leave? What are we voting on specifically? This is the motion. Uh, uh, motion in part B of the Bureau report, which is 1.4.2, um, which basically extends eligibility under both sections of uh, 3.2.3. And 3.2.4. Right. So we're extending, this is the motion to actually extend eligibility under 3.2.3 and 3.2.4. It requires a three quarters vote in favor to pass. So uh, as I said, we're going to do a serpentine vote. Um, uh, everybody who's for a particular side, when I call for the vote, should stand unless they're unable to do so. And then we'll count off when you count the number, you should sit down. So all of those uh, in favor of this motion, please stand. Uh, starting with the head table. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. <laughs> 63, 64, 65, 66, 70, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, okay. Committee, which is listed as 
Minority Report 2, which is item 1.4.6 on your agenda, page 5, is a separate UGO 3.2.3 extension that explicitly covers the retros because they are not automatically covered by the 3.2.3 extension that we just passed. And therefore, that motion is now being brought before this body. Okay, this is 1.4.6. It's an independent resolution uh, which would extend eligibility for the retro Hugo's next year. Uh, is that much time limit of six minutes for debate on this? Yes. A point of inquiry. It says all pre-38 works that are allowed. Can you clarify what that means? I know it was discussed briefly in the committee, and I don't think there was a resolution. Um, basically, 3.2.4 limits which pre-1938 works are allowed. It says that only works that, basically 3.2.3 and 3.2.4 combine to say, if there was a pre-1938 work that was published outside the U.S., was published in the U.S. in 1938, and, and was nominated prior to that for a Hugo, um, well, there actually aren't very many. <laughs> so, this is simply taking the same form, but in fact, that said, it's an all uh, Another point of inquiry. What about works published before 1938 that were outside the U.S. that were then published in the U.S. post-1938 and eligible? And that is not allowed under our rules. That extended eligibility doesn't work that. Extended eligibility doesn't work that way. It requires you to have been published outside the U.S. sometime, anytime, and then published in the U.S. in the year that clicks off your eligibility. And that's the only thing that the Constitution allows <laughs> us what, to What extend. I need to say, let, let me clarify. Okay. Um, let me clarify is a work, let me give a fictional example. Why don't you come on up? Okay, I'll go to the Yes. My name is Rene Walling. Uh, let me quite clarify my inquiry with a fictional example. A work is published in, say, 1935 outside of the U.S. It is then published um, within the U.S. later on and nominated. Yeah, okay. Um, would it still be eligible if it has been nominated? No. no. Uh, basically, what extended eligibility says is that if it was published outside the U.S. sometime before the standard eligibility year, i.e., the year before, we actually award the UGOs. Because, you know, this is 2013, we are awarding the UGOs for works that appeared in 2000. 12. Um, for the retros, the way it works is we will award those for as if we were the 1939 World Con and therefore award it for works that appeared in 1938. So it's the 1938 that's the magic year that triggers eligibility. So you had to have been published sometime before 1938 outside the United States and then, in 1938, in the United States. Uh, I believe we, for, what they're worried about is, for next year, your figure will be for 40 and published in 39, right? That right was next year. It that changes depends, each year. That depends entirely on what the next year's business is. Um, um, my name is Jeff, Jeffrey Thorpe. I would like to ask why, if the um, next year we are nominating the Hugos for books published in 2013. Sorry? Yeah. 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 Sorry, I've got myself confused. 
easy to do on this side. Maybe we should vote before it's further confusion. <laughs> slightly less absurd to, to, to extend the eligibility, not automatically, but as a specific case. Uh, the works published in 1937 and before, and then first published in the U.S. in 1938, have plenty of opportunity, have had plenty of opportunity to be uh, known to the people nominating in 2013. Uh, we've kind of run out of time, <laughs> so I think we should just go ahead and vote. <laughs> Um, so we're voting on 1.4.6, which also requires a three-quarters vote. I guess I will try to do this by a, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, let's try, try a show of hands first. Okay, those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you, those opposed? Thank you. There being less than three-quarters in favor, the motion fails. Okay, the next thing is that we are also proposing two constitutional amendments. The first one is item 1.4.3 in your agendas on page 4. Uh, what 1.4.3 does, we have, we have two kinds of extensions that we can pass. Let me just quickly summarize the general concept. We have two kinds of extensions we can pass. One is the blanket exemption for non-US works that we just passed in this particular case for the current, although not the retros. In addition to that, section 3.4, which is a different section of the Constitution, says that if a work only receives extremely limited distribution, that you are allowed to pass an extension for that specific work if, in the opinion of the meeting, the distribution on that thing has been so limited that it would be unfair or whatever to not allow that work to be brought up. The current requirement for passing an extension, either a specific work extension or the blanket extension, is a three-quarters vote. What 1.4.3 does is it changes that requirement from a three-quarters vote for a specific work exemption to a two-thirds vote. And the discussion, as we say, most things that require supermajorities normally require only a two-thirds supermajority. And therefore, this would change it to the same supermajority for a specific work extension. So since this is a constitutional amendment, we can't pass it here. But we need to set a time limit. Correct. So, <laughs> how many people are on the committee? The hero committee? Yes. Roughly About a dozen. Roughly a dozen. So you're doing an amendment there, maybe for a change of one person no. vote. No, 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 no. It's a business meeting. No, it's of the business meeting. The order? It's a three-quarters yeah. vote of the business meeting. This would change it to a two-thirds vote of the business meeting. I suggest a time limit of four minutes. Are there other value to it? Hearing none, time limit is set at four minutes. Constitutional amendment. Um, the next item is 1.4.4 and 1.4.4 is the constitutional amendment is a constitutional amendment that would specific we did the specific works the last time this changes the 3.2.3 the blanket exemption from a three quarters vote to a two-thirds vote. Again, this is the constitutional amendment. This meeting can only set time limits. So I suggest a time limit of eight minutes on this. There is also Minority Report 3, which uh, 
Okay, yeah, okay, anyway, so there are, yes, fine. Microphone. Mike, what's the question? Glenn, 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 Ask your so, question. Just ask her. All I'm asking for is from the motion maker as a clarification between this and the previous. That's all. Different sections. Um, that, that, that yeah. Basically, there are the two kinds of extensions. One is a specific works ex extension, and one is a blanket non-U.S. exemption. The first constitutional amendment changes the specific works from a three-quarters to a two-thirds. This makes the parallel change for the non-U.S. exemption. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, is it appropriate at this time to move that these two issues be considered together for debate while we decide? What was, Mr. Chairman, what was the question? The question was whether it would be in order to move that these be considered together. Uh, I think the answer is uh, yes. Um, is there a second? Such a second. Second. Um, I, I was so saying. Okay, uh, we, we do need to set the time limit, uh, but if they're going to be combined, then that would affect these things. Um, we should engage in debate, but I think these are different issues. Uh, is there any further discussion on the motion to combine these for consideration? Uh, can these be considered together? No, but there is not. So I guess we will vote on the motion to consider these two items together. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Nays have it, I believe. Anybody does that? Division? No, call for division. Oh, yeah. uh, those in, in favor, please stand. Well, considering these two items together, please stand. Okay, thank you. All those opposed? Uh, we we'll still believe the nays have it. Thank you. So we're back to setting the time limit for 1.4.4. Which I recommend eight minutes um, on other values. Four. four. Four minutes has been suggested. Any other values? Six. What? Six. 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 Okay. Eight, four, eight, six, four. Two. Two. Okay. <laughs> uh, any further? Any further values suggested? Okay. Uh, those in favor of eight minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Nays have it. Those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Nays have it. Those in favor of four minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. A great time is set at four minutes on 1.4.4. The next item we're raising, this completes the majority reports of the committee. We still have one minority report that remains. Uh, that would be a constitutional amendment that effectively will make the permanent, make basically the 3.2.3 extension, i.e. the non-U.S. extension, a permanent part of the Constitution. Point of order? Yes. Is it in order to object to consideration? Yes. To, yes. Then I would like to object to consideration. Okay. Uh, those who are in favor of considering this, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Okay. There is not. It fails to have two thirds in the negative, so it, it will be considered. Okay. Basically, what this will do is it makes it permanent. The wording basically just goes into 3.2.3 and strikes out all the stuff that says it's up to the business meeting to decide. It simply says those works shall automatically be given an extension. Uh, and as I say, this was introduced as minority report because there was not a majority of the committee in favor of making this constitutional change. Since this is a constitutional change, this meeting can do nothing except setting times, amending, all, all the usual things that the preliminary can do, but can't, we cannot pass this. 
That can only be done by the main meeting. Ten minutes. Fifteen. Fifteen. Wow. Other values? Five. Five. <laughs> Eight. I guess we're multiples of five this time, so we're multiples of two. Eight. Thirteen. Eight. Eight. Okay. <coughs> Other values? All those in favor of 15 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? And the nays have it. Those in favor of 10 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. It's 10 minutes. That completes the Euro. Oh, thank you. <laughs> is the formalization of long list entry to the uh, report. Couldn't hear one. Your turn. I, I, it's brief, it's in the report, just let's go. Okay, the chair says it's brief, it's in the report, let's go. Okay. There is a personal privilege. Yes. Um, since I was stuck up there for far longer than I had hoped to be, I think the sign up sheet Passed me by. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> the to check on the status of the sign up sheet. The sign up sheet should continue to move and should ultimately end up back in front. So, uh, how about if people who have not signed the sign up sheet raise their hands? So, there seems to be a couple people at the far right and a considerable scattering on the left. So, thanks for doing that. We'll attempt to get the sign up list to you. Meanwhile, the Foley Committee Report does contain a uh, request of, that the Foley Committee be continued. Uh, this is on page 7, and it actually probably should be labeled 1.5.1. Um, but it's not, it's actually 1.5, it's the report, and there's a, there is a, in it, a uh, request. Uh, is there any objection to continuing the Foley Committee? Hearing none, I think by unanimous consent. Committee is continued. Uh, Mr. Chairman, a parliamentary inquiry. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in light of our rules allowing business to be added to the agenda uh, by the consent of the chair, or as I recall, by suspension of the rules which requires a two-thirds vote, would it be in order at this meeting or at the main business meeting for anyone to introduce a motion creating a committee? to study the issues regarding the YA Hugo for to report to next year's World Cup sure. uh, with the consent of the chair or a two-thirds vote of the meeting. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Believe it or not, there were people texting me about this as we were sitting there. Believe it. You too. As per the agenda, as we were on, we will next go to section 4.2. What page? I'll tell you when I find it. Sorry. Yay. Yes, please.